Welcome to the Fire and Earth Podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Gruber. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Fire and Earth Podcast. I'm your co-host, Kathy Gruber. And I'm Jason Mefford, and today we have Stacy Hyland with us. Hey, Stacy, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. So happy to be here. Thanks for well, having me. We're glad to have you too. So maybe, you know, at the beginning, we just usually like to have you give a little brief background onto yourself so people get to know you a little bit better. And then we're just going to jump in, start asking questions, start talking and see where it goes. Sure. Sounds like fun. So I am a business coach. I've been coaching for 20 years since the dawn of coaching. And I work with ambitious, high achieving entrepreneurs to help them add a zero without the hustle. And that happened because my dad died when he was 56. So when that happened, it really made me step back and look at like, how can you grow a business, but still have a life, still do the things that when you're sitting there at the end of your life, say, oh, I, it was a life well lived. So that's how that came about. And uh, I really like helping entrepreneurs grow their businesses and be able at the end of the day to say, oh, like I can actually take some time with my family or do the things I love as opposed to working 24 seven. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say, because again, Kathy and I are both entrepreneurs as well. And I think that is one of the biggest Achilles heels of most entrepreneurs, right? I mean, we do it because we love it. I mean, I joke with my wife, it's not really work. So if I'm working on the weekend, it doesn't feel like work, but I don't do a very good job of disconnecting, right? And having those boundaries sometimes. And I'm sure that you deal with that a lot with the people that you're working with, right? Yeah, and I think there's two reasons that people do it. So number one, there's the people like you that you just get really excited and passionate about it. As, as you know, I worked with Tony Robbins and he used to say, you know, an entrepreneur is an artist whose expression of art is their business. Oh. Ding, and, ding, ding. I love yeah, that. Yeah, love yeah, that. And so that's, you know, the people that are like that, it doesn't feel like work to us. But then there's on the other side, the people that are working 24 seven because they're not making enough money. Their business isn't profitable enough. They're not charging enough or they're procrastinating and not getting stuff done or they're doing the wrong thing. So there's, there's both ways that people get sucked into working all the time, I think. Well, and do you see people who think they're doing it because they love it but then when they step back they realize oh no god i'm stuck in a grind as if i'm working for somebody else how do you differentiate between that and and help them shift that well i think there's you know our culture the north american culture is to to work hard to hustle there's this glorification of the hustle um you know you see you know gary v you see people um like the 10x mindset and so there's this mindset of like, oh my gosh, if I'm not working, that comes from our ancestors that were like, you have to work hard. And so we sometimes feel like, oh my gosh, I should be working. And if you don't allow yourself or surround yourself with other people that have created things that are fun and joyful, and they have something else that they want to do with their life, then, then you normalize that. I know for myself, I tend to really work a lot harder and longer hours in the winter because well right now it's mud season right so it's like <laughs> oh the mud the snow is melting yeah. you know so it's it's really like easy to work hard when it's not nice outside right so I yeah, tend to find true. myself going into seasons of like okay I'm gonna work really hard until December and then I'm gonna you know spend more time doing fun things with the kids and you know Christmas yeah. activities and then I'm gonna work really hard until spring break and then I'm gonna work really hard until you know, spring, you know, so mm -hmm. I kind of plan for that on my calendar. I have a big wall calendar and I'll say like, these are like the, you know, 90 days that I'm going to be working on these projects and then allow myself to, to take a week off or to take, you know, a long weekend and also to have something that is a hard stop on your day. Yeah. Because that's also a challenge, you know, especially now with, you know, the kids don't have school. So it's like, there's no bell to ring or no school bus to catch. Um, I, I yeah, I, I love that you brought that point up because uh, during COVID, my business stopped and I got to sit in that stillness and say, what do I really want? And before COVID, I was working 20, I was seeing 28 clients a week. I was running myself ragged. I was working nights. I was working weekends. I was making a shit ton of money, but 
I was exhausted. I was unhappy. I was, I had no, you know, if a, if a, an appointment opened up, I'd be like, Oh my God, my business is failing. I'm going to be broke. And it's like, come on, Gruber, come on. Like, seriously, like sit down for a second. And so having that, you know, a couple weeks stretching into a couple months to sit in that stillness, I realized, what do I really want? And I've completely shifted how I do business. And the coach that I was speaking to the other day, she said, well, how do you know when to take the time? How do you know to give yourself that hour of time? And I said, well, I'm going to look at my whole week. And if I see I have my entire weekend free, maybe I will fill that open spot. If I know that I'm going on vacation next week, I will have to front load a little bit in order to not have to work on the vacation. So I love that you brought that up. And I remember so clearly, I walked into a client's house, this was years ago. He was in insurance. And I said, oh, you're getting a massage in the middle of the day. He goes, yeah, I figured I'd get one before I, you know, my wife and I head to Hawaii for a month. And I said, what, you don't work anymore? And he goes, no. And I was like, wait, what? Like, pfft. you know, because I was used to him being in the office, being in the office, being in the office. And he put systems in place so that it was running and he could go to Hawaii with his wife for a month. Yeah. So it's how do we do that? <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. I mean, yeah. my client, um, I just had a co- client complete yesterday whose business has gone from a hundred thousand to 300,000 and she goes hiking every week, right? She has tons of downtime. She has tons of space. Um, another client has gone from six to eight figures since we've been working together and he golfs every week. He's been able, like he has a teenage daughter who's really struggling with COVID and not sick, but just mentally struggling with it. And he was able to take time off to go take her away for a few days to, you know, their ranch and just hang out and have father daughter time. So it's really like, how can you create exactly what you want, but it's really being intentional. And also like what you were saying of like, if you had an hour open up, you immediately shift into that lack energy, which mm-hmm. can be a common default because, you know, we're seeing society is a, you know, a culture of lack. It's not a culture of abundance and prosperity True. that we're, that we've grown up in. So it's a natural habit to go to, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to pay the mortgage. It's like, no, you, you're totally abundant. You can totally recreate, you know, another client in that spot if you want. Or not. Um, yeah, exactly. Or not or comfortably make the choice to go, you know what? I'm going to the beach with my boyfriend for an hour Yeah, because I have money in the bank because I have yes. that, that mindset of, and the respect for myself to say, you need a freaking hour off. Yes. Like you deserve that time off. You deserve that connection with your boyfriend or your partner. Yeah. Jason, you're bursting. I can see. Well, I know it's, 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 it's like, well, because one of the things that you said, Stacy is, you know, um, that a lot of what causes that grind, that lack mentality is that most entrepreneurs don't charge enough. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, I mean, I've, I've seen this, you know, I, I worked a lot in consulting beforehand and people that I've coached, you know, that kind of move from employee to, to consultant, they, they kind of do the same thing. They're like, Oh, you know, if I make 50 bucks an hour, that's a hundred thousand a year. Right. I'm, I'm doing great. I'm like, if you charge 50 bucks an hour, that's not what you make, right? Because the consulting world is triple usually what mm-hmm. you want to actually make. So if you want to make 50 bucks an hour, you got to charge 150 bucks an hour, right? To cover your overhead, everything else, be able to pay yourself the 50. And, and I see that, I hear that a lot from other entrepreneurs too, is they're really not charging enough So, and it can be two things, right? Either they're undervaluing the time that they're actually billing or they feel like, well, this is my purpose and I just need to give it to people for free. So how do you, how do you deal with that? Because again, I see this over and over and over. This is an elephant for, for most entrepreneurs. They never, that's why they're working so fucking hard. And I think it's because we're surrounded by people that work a nine to five that, you know, $50 an hour, hundred dollars an hour is like amazing. And that's what they see. And it's like, you know, to blow their mind. Like when we worked, when I was consulting with Tony Robbins, it was $50,000 for the first month of consulting. And then it was $30,000 a month thereafter that we charged. And so it wasn't charging by the hour. It was charging for the project, value billing for the instead transformation. Of hours. Yeah. And I think when you're surrounded with other people that have, you know, like they think, oh, you grow up and you get this good job and it's, you know, 50,000 a year, a hundred thousand a year. It's really hard to be that person that, that can stretch and say like, 
you know, my, my stepdaughter just got signed in to the bar as an attorney. And I'm like, wow. I make like triple, quadruple, quintuple what an attorney makes. Right. But it's because there's that transformation there that you're able to provide and people pay for transformation versus paying for just an hour of somebody's time. And so it's really like taking that, that step back. One of my clients, the one that just completed with me, she went from charging $800 for her coaching. And, you know, she's a really, really good leadership coach, executive coach for tech entrepreneurs. And now she's selling programs and packages that are $2,500 average. So, you know, we really looked at, okay, but what, who are you serving? How can you help them get more and package that together as opposed to charging for the hour, charging for the transformation that people get? Yeah. Interesting. I think there's such a perception in our society about and I see this especially with the up and coming generation about greed and capitalism. And yeah, you know, I remember when I was an actor, which, you know, that was not full time work. Um, I got a role in a little TV show and somebody said, just out of curiosity, what do you what do you get paid to be a day player on a TV show? And at that time, I think SAG scale was like 700 bucks a day. And I said, it's 700 bucks a day. <gasps> oh, my God. Hey! OK, which in the acting world is nothing. If you look at what celebrities are making. And I said, but understand, first of all, that's a 15 hour day. Mm -hmm. So break that down. I said, second of all, I got one of those this month. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting that every, this is not a 40 hour a week job. This is a one time thing, but people were appalled at that amount of money. So I think there's still this perception, you know, people get on Deepak Chopra all the time because he has so much wealth and so much money and they call him deep pocket Chopra. It's like, he provides transformation. But why should he not? make that much money like yeah exactly and i think it's also of you know you can't give from an empty pocket right or an empty bank account you know like during mm -hmm. corona it was like i was giving money to the food banks yeah. right because i'm like okay here's where i think it can make the most difference is people that really don't have money to eat right yeah. and you know but if i'm holding back on what i can do because of fear because of lack then I can't make a difference for other people. Like I, yep. you know, I've been giving um, scholarships in my coaching to people um, that, that make a difference, but I'm very selective of the person that I'm going to accept for a scholarship. They're still going to have to pay because of the fact that if you don't pay, you don't pay attention, but mm -hmm. it's allowing them to get this higher level of coaching, higher level of transformation that they could maybe afford at the time. Yeah. Um, but you can't do that if you can't feed your kids, right? Or if you Absolutely. can't pay car payment. Yeah. So it allows you to give more. That, and and I, I appreciate that. I did the same thing. I wasn't working, but I found a way to give money to the food bank the day that they were doubling all the donations. It's like, yeah. you know, we can do with our wealth, with our abundance, whatever we want to. If you want to look at it negatively, it's just going to be negative back. Um, so the, for the person listening to this and going, okay, charge more, what else? What, what tips do you have to help get these people to where they want to go? Well, in my, my system that I teach to add a zero without the hustle, there's seven steps. So the first thing is the mindset, right? And that, you know, and the mindset involves, you know, the money mindset, right? Because if you're still struggling with this money mindset, this lack mindset, one of my clients last year went away for a month and went skiing. He came back with an idea that he is now in negotiations to sell for millions of dollars. Wow. Right. But he couldn't have gotten this new idea if he was like, I must work every hour and I must sit at this desk. Right. So I'm sure, Kathy, you go out and you go to the beach and like amazing ideas come to you. There's this spaciousness. There's inspiration that can come versus if you're on the phone every hour, there's no space for inspiration to strike. So mindset around money, mindset around playing small, that is crucial in order to go to the next level in your business. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And it's true because the only reason I, I had the ability to restructure my entire life was the space that COVID provided for me or else yeah, I would be grinding on the exact same way I was before. Yeah, yeah, I love that mindset space. Yeah. And then the second thing we do is look at hidden profits. So I've written a book that's coming out soon called Hidden Profits, More Clients and Cash. And what it looks at is where are the 
income opportunities in your business that you're just not seeing. I, I say, it's like when you put on a pair of old jeans out of the dryer and you find a $20 bill and you're like, Oh my gosh, I found $20. Right. Well, it's like that, but with a lot more zeros, the average person finds $85,000 of hidden profits in their business that they're not even aware of. And I think what happens with entrepreneurs is that we always look for that shiny object. We're always looking for that quick fix of like, oh, I'm going to do a Facebook ads class. I'm going to do a class on this versus looking strategically for the things that you're missing in your business that could add money, add profit right away without doing any additional marketing or advertising. So we, we do that to really dig into the business, to find those areas that you're just overlooking. Um, and charging more is one of them, right? Because most people can raise their prices without, you know, losing clients, even 20%, um, right off the bat. Yeah. And then the third thing we do is we look at who are those perfect clients, you know? So, um, I worked with Chet Holmes, who's the author of the ultimate sales machine. Mm -hmm. And he was partners with Tony Robbins with business mastery. That's how I got to work introduced to Tony and got to work with Tony and he, he said, you know, like there's always that bigger client that has more of a budget that can spend more with you and can stay longer. Like I've had clients that have been with me for over 13 years. So what that means is I don't have to go out and go find new clients every single day because my clients stay for years. They get awesome results. So they're like, okay, what's the next level? What's the next level? I warn people when they sign up for coaching, they're like, oh, is it six months or a year? And I said, well, you know, you have the initial contract, but I'm going to warn you, you're probably going to stay with me forever because you're going to keep getting results. You're going to keep, you know, stretching into it. And that's, that's what's going to happen. So, um, you know, when you work with your perfect clients, I find that there are people that give you energy. So if you've ever Mm -hmm. had a client that you get off the phone and you're like, oh my gosh, that was fun. That was, you know, you feel good. That's the kind of client you want to work with. It's not just about the money. Oh yeah. As opposed to when you look in your book that day and you go, oh God, he's coming in today. Okay. You know, it's like, I got rid of those people so long ago. And when they call me now, I can, I get, I'm like, I don't think this is a fit. Because we're yeah. picking our clients just as much as they're picking us. And I think we forget that so often. Yeah. And that comes back to the mindset, which yeah. you probably had to shift that mindset years ago to say, you know what? I'm not accepting everybody. Everybody yeah. is not a fit. And if, if you have somebody that drains your energy, like even like Sunday night, you look at your schedule for the week and you're like, oh, I have Bob. Right. And then the you ass. look at Tuesday night. You're like, oh, I have Bob tomorrow. Right. <laughs> like, it's like that psychic loss of energy is not a good fit for your business because it doesn't help you create more abundance from that space. Yeah. But um, the next thing we do, so once you find those perfect clients, we look at what is the strategic messaging that we need to do to get those clients. So um, I'll give you an example. One of my clients is in logistics, which logistics is a very commoditized industry. And I think a lot of businesses now find themselves in a commoditized space that you do you know like this was in the olden days you would look in the phone book and there would be like 800 attorneys or 800 accountants or you know now like a gazillion coaches whatever you know a speaker right so when you're in this commoditized space of people looking for the cheapest fastest thing it's not a powerful space to do your marketing from or to do a sales process from so what i like to do is switch you from being a commodity to being couture right? So if you look for commodity, you're going to go find a shirt at, at winner, winners or, you know, Walmart that you're just like flicking on the rack and you find a black t-shirt, right? But if you go to a couture and you go to Chanel to find a black blouse, completely different experience. So for my logistics client, what we looked at is who are his perfect clients? We discovered what that spot was for him. That was the sweet spot. And then what is the messaging that's going to get him from in logistics people are like how can you go from a to b and can you do it the cheapest possible he literally says to people i am not going to be the cheapest option right what i'm going to do is help you with your end client satisfaction so that when somebody buys from you they they want to install a medical device they've shut down the hospital for the day and when the thing gets delivered after a sales process of 18 months to three years the client is not ticked off at you right? Because if something gets delivered, they've shut down the hospital and 
it's still on the loading dock because they don't have the right equipment. It's still in the hall. It's still in parts. Your client is not going to go buy another piece of equipment from you in a few years. They're not going to tell this other, you know, hospital administrators to buy this piece of equipment because it was awesome. They're going to be like, you know, what? I was really excited about this piece of equipment, but it ended up my whole logistics was shut down for three days because they didn't deliver it correctly. Yeah. So when you <clears throat> come from that spot of like, how can I help the client in a different way and really differentiate myself? It really makes sales so much easier. Um, so that's really with the offer and the messaging so important. Yeah. Um, the other thing we do is to look at the packaging and pricing. So I mentioned yeah. my client that went from $800 to $2,500 sale. I have other clients that have gone from like $1,500 to $2,500 average sale. And the reason why is because if you look at those perfect clients, you look at the pain that they have, you look at what they want. You know, yeah. Tony Robbins says, you know, people do things to avoid pain or to move towards pleasure. Mm -hmm. So if you're coming from that, how can I help my client get out of the pain and move towards what they want? You can put together packages that actually help them, right? Yeah. Because I think a lot of times people sell things just because everybody else sells it versus looking at who is the perfect client for them. What, what are my skill sets to help them create that transformation they want? And how can I package it so that they get the best results? <laughs> I had a massage client last week. I still do a little bit of massage. And she said, so you do coaching too? And I went, yeah. She goes, what's that help with? And I told her, she goes, oh, geez, I need that. Oh, wait, you do hypnosis too. Does that help with anxiety? I said, yeah. She goes, oh, I need that too. She goes, wait, I saw you do Reiki. And I said, yeah, I do. And she goes, do you have a My Life's Fucked Up package? Like, do you just, can I get everything? <laughs> and I started to laugh. And now most of my clients aren't local anymore. So I can't offer that way. But I thought, uh, yeah, I could actually package that. Like, I'm so screwed up. I need everything packaged. You know, but she had a really good point. The more we talked, the more she realized everything that I did wove into what she needed to help get her out of her collective pain. So right. I, yeah, I, I love that you're talking about it. And, and I need and, to package more stuff. You're and speaking I think right to me at this point. Packaging is so crucial because, you know, if you look at all the things that she had going on, you were kind of doing her a disservice to say, oh, here, just have a massage, right? Yeah. It's like she could have a massage to relieve the immediate pressure or whatever. And I'm dying to go get a massage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's killing me. Um, but the thing is, is like, all of the other things that you can now help her with, it, it's, she's going to feel even better because yeah. number one, I find when people get something from one person, as opposed to getting hypnosis from one person and Reiki from another person, it's like, they feel more taken care of and supported than like having to explain their story, having to explain their problem to five yeah. different people. Yeah, I agree. Jason, you've got thoughts. Well, I was going to say that's one of the, the the points of the longevity too, right? I mean, that's why you have clients that stay with you for years and people get the best results the longer they stay with someone who actually is helping them, right? Because again, you understand it's like, you know, six months ago, you gave me that bullshit excuse, right? Mm -hmm. But if they were with a new coach, you wouldn't know that. And they'd probably get away with, yes. you know, six months of some you know, bad story that they're telling themselves yes. is holding them back where that continuity of really understanding the whole person really helps them that much more. Yes. Yeah. So true. And it's, it's funny because um, I think also with the marketing is that, you know, you'll find somebody that wants to do marketing with, you know, strategic planning and, you know, figuring out their message. And then they go to somebody else for marketing. Then they go to somebody else for sales. And that's where having it all together, like the, the next two steps in my system are stacking your marketing and optimizing your sales process. And so mm -hmm. you can, you can work on the sales process with somebody, but if you don't have the mindset, if you don't have the perfect clients, if you don't have that messaging that separates yeah. you, like, how are you going to do marketing? And I think, you know, with my client now, when we're doing marketing, it's like, I understand what he's saying, even though it's an industry that I have no, no, I never knew anything about logistics before I started working with him. You didn't drive a truck, you know, and I did and, drive and a truck, port, which is port funny enough, forklift I warehousing. And I did drive a truck when I was selling beauty equipment. They had us bring a <laughs> A sample. It was terrible. It was a 24 foot box truck. And I would just get on the turnpike and floor it and pray that I could merge because it had no power. Ah. It was terrible. <laughs> That's but, hilarious. That's um, hilarious. I love but, this. I love this image. 
it was it was horrible it was a big purple truck and i would go down the turnpike and i would drive up to the salon and they would say oh have your driver pull it around the back and i'd be like i am my driver and i was you know wearing a little dress and you know i'd have to go to the truck stop and fill it with diesel it was it was a horrifying this is a lovely image i love i, I love them i love this it was horrifying this. And I still have, see it on the, I still not see that truck, but when I see that kind of truck on the road, I still like have flashbacks. About it. And we, we all have that. We all have that truck. We had to drive. Hey, we're, we're nearing our time. And I love that we're nearing our time because you didn't tell us the last two, I mean, you mentioned what they are, but you didn't get in depth. Them. So that means that if you want to know the last two steps, and if you want to work with Stacey, you have to go talk to her. Yes. And start Definitely. implementing these because I took, I, Jason's a note taker. I took copious notes, which you can't see, because I'm in the process of, re of redoing my entire life. And so reminding me of these steps um, and expanding on these steps, I appreciate. And I know our listeners and our viewers do too, because we're all in process of changing things. So I love this. Jason, any final thoughts for you? And we'll let... Uh... No, I mean, I think again, it, it's, it's, well, and you've, you've shown, Stacey, I mean, you're talking about real people with real results as well right so your process works you wouldn't be a coach for 20 years if it didn't work right right so so yeah i mean how how can people you know reach out to you how's the best way for people to connect in with you and sure you can go to stacyhighland.com and it's stacy with an ey and then highland is help you leverage everything now is how you spell it so um go to stacyhighland.com you can schedule a free optimizer session that we will look at, you know, what are the things that are holding you back in your business? They, again, they're things that you can't see. It's like when you go on one of those makeover shows and they have this person that looks a mess <laughs> and the, the makeover person can be like, oh, well, if we just cut their hair in this shape and uh -huh. did their eye makeup this way, they would look great. Well, that's what I do for people's business is I can see that potential in you and in your business and how to make you put that potential forward so that people want to buy from you. So you can schedule a session. I'm not a hard sell person. Like if it is not a good fit, I will refer you. I have 20 years of, you know, contacts in the industry that, you know, I only want to work with people that are the right fit and are ready to take action and, you know, really add that zero to their business. Yeah. I love it. I'm inspired. I, I actually am. I need to sit down and review some things. So thank you for the nudge and the reminder. Everybody go to her website. Uh, Stacey and I have talked offline before and had amazing conversations. So uh, great, great, powerful woman to work with. So, um, Thanks for so get on me. it. I appreciate yeah, it. absolutely. Uh, I'm Kathy Groover. I can be reached at kathygroover.com. And I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. So go out, have a great week. Contact Stacy. And we'll catch you on the next episode of the Fire and Earth Podcast. See ya. See ya. Bye, everyone.